If I I've armored up a thousand times for country and for king. And many's the tale that I could tell, a song that I could sing. I fought on plains and driving rains and struggled for each breath. At an outdoor Christmas tourney where we damn near froze to death. I've had my share of bruises, and I've watched the arrows fly. But the strangest sight I've ever seen is the man who wouldn't die. He stood a towering seven feet, a giant among men. His armor was of twelve-gauge steel, his hide was that of ten. From a land most far away he came, their champion and king. And many crafty ways he had to make a helmet ring. The battle lines, they soon were joined and marched to my surprise. I was locked in single combat with the man who wouldn't die. We circled around a time or two, then I opened up the show. With an underhand is Rishat, which is still my favorite blow. He didn't even try to block, just brought his great sword down. And split my helm completely from the chin up to the crown. And though my sword was still entrapped in the dent made in his side, what a mighty knight his people cheered is the man who wouldn't die. Full four and twenty fighters fell before his awesome might. And though many blows did land, it seemed that every one was light. The battle soon was over, and by God's own bloody went. Off to the side to doff his gear and hammer out the dents. The second battle soon began and I took another try. Bearing a sword named Rhino's Bane for the man who wouldn't die. Now Rhino's Bane is a special blade immortals for to cow. And if he had not felt those blows, he'd damn well feel them now. Six feet of rattan I sent to drill, then hollowed out the head, and filled that hole with six or maybe seven pounds of lead. Now a single shot was all I'd get as I took that sword on high, and buried it within the helm of the man who wouldn't die. He didn't even bat an eye, just calmly struck me down, and then went on to clear the field of squires, knights, and crown. I pondered why this man was not a stretched out on the dirt. Well, I guess a headshot does no good with nothing there to hurt. The third engagement was delayed to give the Kyurgens time to pry that sword from out the head of the man who wouldn't die. A battle deep within the woods was the last fight of the day. Now the men remaining on my side went on their knees to pray. Oh, Lord, if you do care for us, allow your moon to fall upon his head, for that would be the only blow he'd call. But as we marched atop a hill, a plan occurred which I thought maybe would bring about the death of the man who wouldn't die. Upon the hill there lay a stone a full six feet in girth. Oh, gather round me, fight his bold, we'll bring this man to earth. Six stalwart lads I need with me to strike the final blow, while the rest shall keep behemoth here, occupied below. And when he turns to fight you from up above, we'll fly this boulder full upon the frame of the man who wouldn't die. It happened just as I foresaw from out the woods he ran, and stopped there right below us, as according to the plan. The men below fought bravely while the men above did strain to send that boulder on its way onto his alleged brain. At last the stone it stirred to life, and with a final cry, we sent that boulder on its way to the man who wouldn't die. Knocking trees to left and right, that fearsome missile sped, and with a final bounce it came to rest upon his head. His arms and legs were all that we could see beneath the stone. But as we came from atop the hill, we heard our victim groan. Astounded, around him bowed, we stood as the day bled into night. And heard him say, one final time, My lord, that blow was light. <laughs> <laughs> ah.